Ladies and gentlemen, today we will present you uh, how, to, how to, uh, we can efficiently use AI in gaming workflows. <coughs> so we will talk about several topics about using AI in game development. We will talk about how you can use directly at coding with using copilots like GitHub Copilot. We'll talk about how we can uh, improve matchmaking systems at multiplayer games. And we will talk about using AI to generate art in terms of text and in terms of uh, concept art. So me, I'm Mohamed, and this is my colleague, Armin Subasic. We are uh, both 19 year old, and we are from company Monad Games that is owned by Monetize Ad. We always wanted to create a successful game development studio in Bosnia Herzegovina, and we are currently one of the only, if not the only, uh, game development studio that is officially Bosnian game development studio in Bosnia and Herzegovina. So our parent company, Monetize Ed, is one of the largest affiliate marketing companies uh, in Southeastern Europe. And they uh, <coughs> work with affiliate marketers, e-commerce, and selling many products. And they wanted to share a dream about game, uh, creating a game dev company with us. And we shared together, and now here we are. Uh, so the importance today, so now we're going to be talking about the importance of AI in game development industry. So AI is becoming really important in both mobile game development industry and uh, PC and console gaming industries. Because using AI can help you to accelerate your uh, development speed so you can get from a project that's just starting up to a project that's fully finished faster by using AI. So some of the tasks that AI can do is it can help you with game analytics, it can help you in targeting when advertising and monetizing your game, it can help you with to create an AI uh, or pathfinding and NPCs for your uh, non-playable characters in the game, it can help you in many other uh, types of decision making, it can help you create 2D assets such as icons, backgrounds, uh, and other types of stuff, as well as 3D content, using some new uh, tools that are available in the AI industry. It can help you to improve player experience in your game, as well as help you with match matchmaking and many other things that we might mention today. First, we will tackle the topic of using AI Copilot while coding. So uh, the first instance, instance of using AI while game development and general developing uh, applications in Industry was uh, using AI Copilot, and there are many AI Copilot solutions like Tab9, etc. And the most popular one is GitHub Copilot. So, uh, what is AI Copilot? So, it is a tool that has a neural network that spans uh, around many millions of lines of code around the internet and knows uh, and predicts the code that you want to learn and improve, etc. etc. Et so, for example, <coughs> Uh, why why uh, a developer should use an AI copilot? So one of the things that improves it, uh, uh, improves the code is actually <coughs> architecture. So for example, if the uh, <coughs> excuse me, developer wants to design a player controller, he can actually just write okay uh, class player controller, and if the AI copilot, as usually it, as it does, has access to all project files, it will know by a neural network, how that player controller should be. But uh, it needs uh, developer's assistance. So um, AI Copilot cannot handle all the code at, at its own because there needs to be human input to uh, customize it and to the true needs of the developer. But it can uh, speed up the development process by a lot. Uh, also about code quality. Why code quality? Because it uses the database of the all the codes on the internet and uh, it trains on the best codes of the internet that can be found on GitHub because it's a GitHub project by my Microsoft. It has all the repositories uh, on the internet. <coughs> so actually it uses by default best code practices that can be uh, done uh, in while developing. So about efficient problem solving, uh, one of the uh, ways also that can Copilot be used is if the developer is really, really a beginner developer, but wants to create games, for example, he can write a comment and write, okay, create me a, a script that does that, 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 that. And you can type enter and it will generate a function that actually can solve that. But the better way is, as I said before, using uh, with 
uh, your functions and just improving them. But there's a possibility for this even. And about resource optimization, because while you speed up development, speed up coding, you can actually just uh, focus more on actually creating the department of game development than just pure coding, because we all game developers know pure coding and coding repetitive things is really, really boring. This solves that. <clears throat> Another thing that uh, AI can tackle on is AI-powered matchmaking. So here, we actually uh, included two images that show uh, two different, uh, two different uh, <clears throat> stats for two different games. And the, one uses AI, another doesn't use AI. For example, this is a, a PC game, Counter-Strike. We all know Counter-Strike. And this is Clash Royale, mobile game. The uh, thing is, why uh, Clash Royale should use, for example, AI, and why Counter-Strike doesn't need to use AI? Because uh, when you start the game, uh, every player in matchmaking should find another player that is even, even skill level, even card level, even etc. But when you have millions of millions of combinations, data, for example, you see, you see hundreds of cards, every card has different level for every player, every card is uh, paired with an, another different card for every player, so it's every, uh, every time the match starts, there's a different skill level, trophy level, card level, card combination. So many, much, much data that cannot be, uh, as it cannot be, how can I say, uh, tackled with a normal algorithm to match the player. So there needs to be an AI that can actually analyze all that data and find the most even <coughs> player that can be paired with that, uh, with that uh, player that has specific that card. Uh, for CSGO, why, for example, CSGO doesn't need to use uh, AI power system because uh, it has predefined everything. There's a team, it has a different ELO level that is based on chess system, it's a normal algorithm, and uh, two teams always start at the same. They have same guns, same money, same starting position, same everything, so it's much more controllable than this. Z that's why uh, matchmaking and uh, AI in matchmaking should be used in games that there's too much data to, uh, to control by normal, uh, normal ways that we used to before. <clears throat> and also, uh, as we said, matchmaking with even players ensures uh, as even match as possible, so it makes uh, satisfaction of winning someone much more better because we do not want to ma match with someone who is uh, like a really, really beginner or someone who is a really, really pr pro uh, alongside us. <clears throat> yep. Okay, so now we're going to be talking about uh, using AI to create art-based stuff. So uh, AI can help you create uh, high-quality textures that are tileable, and they can be in any style you need them to be. So they can be realistic, or they can look like they're hand-drawn, or they can even be look, look like stylized for those 3D-type ty ty stylized games. AI can also generate textures that are tileable from images that are not tileable. So you, you, let's say you have a texture of uh, ground, and when you put it in the game, you see the seams. You can tell the AI to take that image and make it tile, and it will create the exactly the same texture, but it will make those uh, seams disappear which is really useful and can save a lot of time because sometimes uh, making textures tile is a really hard process. AI can also upscale images. So if you have uh, an, a texture that's uh, 512 by 512 and you need it to be a 4K texture, AI can do that and it will also increase the sharpness and add details to that photo. Now, the only limit of the, for the upscaling and for the resolution is actually the uh, your GPU power. So if your GPU isn't powerful enough, it might not be able to do 8K, 16K, or whatever. But going from 512 to 4K is capable of, on many GPUs. AI can also generate uh, albedo textures that can later be used to create uh, fully physically based rendering materials for uh, realistic games. So not for hyper casual, but for example, if you're developing PC, console, or something like that, you can use also AI to create those highly realistic textures using AI and some other tools as well. So here's an example of some textures that AI generated. We can see bricks, uh, some kind of wooden log, as well as wooden plank, and a marble texture there. And all have a different style. And uh, here as well, some examples, like realistic dirt, uh, some tiles, and wall pat patterns. 
Now, if you're making a 2D game, AI can also be used to generate high quality 2D uh, assets such as backgrounds, UI icons, characters, style sets, texture atlases, uh, really whatever you need for your game. Uh, and by using this, AI can help you to speed up your process because you're not going to be creating everything by your, with your hand, you know. So you will be using AI to either create a fully finished asset or you will get the asset and then modify it by hand. But it's also much faster than just making it by your hand. And AI-generated assets can be used in any types of games, including mobile, console, PC, VR, it just doesn't matter. And here we have uh, an example of some AI-generated icons. As you can see, they're detailed and uh, they fit different styles. Here we have some flat style and here we have shaded icons that can be used in uh, many mobile games, as well as PC games, of course. Now, if you're making uh, some higher level game than hyper-casual, you may need concept art. And finding concept artists can be hard or you might want to make a game on your, on your own but you don't know how to draw. Well, AI can help you with that as well. All you need to do is just enter a few words and the AI can generate you many images of what you said you want, that you want. Now we'll take a look at some examples. Here we have an example, uh, multiple examples of similarly, similar style images and all showing a different part of the image, of the city in the image that can be used to create a 3D world afterwards. Now, AI is not only useful for programming and 3D art it's, and 2D, it's also possible to use AI for many other things, such as creating descriptive and fun uh, in-game item descriptions, uh, creating game descriptions for stores, so you don't need to think about you know, keywords and words, you can tell AI to do it, and it will do it very well for you. It can also help you create a story for the game or enhance your current story all or, or allure in the game. Uh, that you currently have. If you don't know what game you, to make, you can tell AI to give you some ideas for what games you could make, and sometimes it could give you an idea that's really amazing from start, or it might give you a starting point so you can get yourself a better idea. And AI can also help you teach other things that you might not know by explaining you things, showing you things, and stuff like that. Now, here we have some... For example, we entered uh, this prompt, and this is available to everyone, really. You can open up Microsoft Edge, and you can enter a text like this, and it will generate a really amazing description for uh, a game. So here we took an inspiration from Chrome's dinosaur game, and that's the description we got. You can read it. And here we also have uh, an example that shows creating uh, descriptions for in-game items. So let's say that you have a sword, so here we have an example of a really old sword that's valuable and made of diamonds and other gems. And by telling this to AI in Microsoft Edge, you can use any AI you need, uh, we got a description that you can read here and see for yourself. It's pretty good for AI. And if you want, you can always modify this and have a good text to help you. And this will just help you speed up your process, development process as much as possible. Uh, one bonus thing that I would uh, think uh, I would like to add is, so if you are not uh, good enough to create prompts for AI, for example, for image generation that we showed before, actually you can use <coughs> AI like GPT-4 to create uh, yeah. prompts for uh, AI like Mid Journey to create images. So it's it's really it's en uh, endless possibilities. Uh, it's it's emergence of the technology and. Uh, it's so uh, good right now, those base models like Stable Diffusion that we use for text yeah. and like uh, GPT-4 that we use for text, that we can expand it and make anything out of it. Just there needs to be people who will do it in creative ways. Uh, you yeah. can use AI to help you use AI. It, it's, really, it's really paradoxical, but yeah. Now that's all we have. If you have some questions, we're happy to answer right now or outside. Um, I'm Mohamed from Denu Games. Uh, we're a mobile game uh, developer and publisher. Uh, the thing I wanted to ask is, uh, you know, um, since the AI blew up the uh, the entire social media with the news and all the people got involved with them, they've been, they've been so interested in the AI, AIs and they thought that many jobs like 
developing the games, like you know, the art stuff, uh, is going to fade away. But uh, the thing is, uh, since uh, I'm watching the uh, seminars, the talks, like you guys, uh, thank you, coming here talking like, uh, no, the art is going to be changed and the uh, the style of the job is going to be compared to the part of uh, working with AI, cooperating with AI, and AI is going to just boost up the uh, workflow. Uh, my question is that, uh, do you guys, uh, I, I, w I was at first of the uh, seminar, I was wondering if you're going to, uh, you know, uh, suggest this using uh, a kind of an AI uh, of yours. You've developed any AIs or not, and uh, what does your company do with AIs? Uh, uh, so we do not have our own AI for now, uh, but actually, every, any AI outside yeah. that you can find can help you do your things. Actually, so <coughs> it doesn't matter. Which AI you use? Really? Actually, uh, I mean, uh, our, me, we as Monad Games, we do not have our custom AI, but our parent company is actually creating uh, its own ML agents, its own AI to analyze the data in, for their needs, for selling, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. I mean, uh, uh, you know, as everything that goes public, it's just like one percent of pow power of the mo most maximum power available today. So, ChatGPT, GPT-4, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, it's all like uh, not, not the greatest thing that out, the, out there to use. So I think the future is actually is in custom made AIs. And um, okay, there are base models like stable diffusion that we use, but um, there, there, there's no need for everyone to create their own AI yeah. from scratch. We can actually modify the models and add the add-ons, for example, for stable diffusion, um, add the ex many, many layers to it and make a, custom AI out of it, just like a G G GPT-4, you can train it to do something totally else. Or, or for example, one, uh, one good example is AutoGPT. AutoGPT is a new uh, way of uh, interacting with the internet, and it's like just multiple GPT-4s that uh, uh, they talk to each other and do things. So I think it's just expanding the base models and uh, modifying them to your own need. Uh, but in some cases, the custom AI is, should be used. Uh, yeah, and uh, you nicely mentioned about the custom AI. And uh, I wonder uh, why the game industry is still waiting for custom AI for games, MOA games. You know, uh, it's so much usable about the art that you've talked just now, about the analyzing the store, about the apps, the data, the CPI tests, uh, all of this stuff we need. I've heard uh, just a couple of days ago that mobile action is still uh, is too using the uh, AIs like ChatGPT in their uh, ASO optimization plans. And uh, they're trying to implement the thing. And uh, that was a good news, but uh, I think we really need a customized AI and I hope we come with something that like yeah, so o currently only like you can teach ChatGPT how, how to do certain things, but currently as far for art and stuff, Stable Diffusion is the only, the best uh, customizable uh, generator you have. So you can, you can either download other models to help you generate other styles of images. You can generate fully realistic images or drawings or textures without shadows, you know. And you can train your own models for that. So you, you can download images, find images, and then train, model, uh, train that AI model on that, those images. And you can use your own trained model to uh, in stable diffusion. So we can already create custom AIs from the AIs that already exist. So kind of there. I mean, uh, about one, one, one thing about uh, custom AIs. So actually, you see, I mentioned the Clash Royale and the matchmaking system. That's a custom AI because it's really custom use. They could use uh, GPT-4 to somehow create that, but I think um, people are now overusing GPT-4, GP, generally chat GPT for many things. Uh, personally, what I like to do is actually uh, use a GPT-4 to create new, smaller uh, AIs and smaller programs that actually yeah, yeah. Uh, do the things for me because I know it's, it's only a text model. I want to do something else. So, but uh, I think there needs to be a time for AI to grow because 
it's right now, it's, uh, it's a hype. It's a hype uh, moment, just like crypto was last year. And the uh, thing is, I th my personal take on it is it will not uh, grow as fast as right now as it goes. It will slow down sometimes, but it will grow definitely. And we need to just let the world sink in the fact that AI is taking over in some ways. And just like an industrial revolution happened, and uh, when the machines come and people were scared, that's how we are scared right now. The world will not fail, it will just change in, in, in the, some time frame in a way that we cannot right now imagine, or maybe we can. It's for other people to think. We are just the game developers. Yeah. <laughs> AI is um, not taking jobs, it's just helping people. <laughs> yeah, and uh, you know, the, just the people who can take the changes survive it <laughs> in the end. <laughs> We're like dinosaurs. <laughs> <coughs> Okay. All right, thank you for thank you. answering me. I think. Any more questions? Okay. Okay. That's it then. Thank you. That's thank it. you for thank your time. You.